What if wolves were introduced into the Amazonian rainforest? They say you can be hungry like the wolf, but not many are. A wolf has a hunger so deep, so raw, it is what drives them to stay alive. Wolves are excellent hunters. They'd have to be or else they would have gone extinct a long time ago. Wolves are symbols of power and respect in the regions they live in. But what if we turned their world upside down and threw them into an entirely different region, the Amazonian rainforest? That's right, we're taking a pack of wolves and bringing them down south to the Amazon. Let's see what happens to the wolves and to the Amazon itself. Wolf Region So we want to know what a pack of wolves will be like once we transport them down to the Amazonian rainforest, because it does differ greatly from where they currently live. But where do wolves currently live? There are many subspecies of wolves found in various places in the world, but there are just two species of wolves, grey wolves and red wolves. The grey wolf has a huge area in which he inhabits, not so big that it includes the Amazon, but still an impressive range. Grey wolves have what's known as a circumpolar range, meaning they are located in one of Earth's polar regions, and that pole would be the North Pole. But we are not saying you can find only grey wolves all the way up at the North Pole. But most of the grey wolf population lives in countries like Canada, United States, Russia, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Poland, and other northern countries. Now there are also red wolves, and they have a much smaller range that they cover. They once covered much of the United States from Texas to Pennsylvania, but their habitat has since been reduced massively. The only place you can find red wolves now is in an area of northeastern North Carolina. Grey wolves tend to be found in habitats such as temperate forests, mountains, tigers, and tundras, but as we've seen that they can travel farther south, we realize that they can also thrive in deserts and grasslands, even if the temperature is higher. They are generally used to colder temperatures, but they never restrict themselves to one particular habitat as an entire species. They can get by in various situations. Red wolves are restricted to a single area in North Carolina, but they used to roam free in many climates and habitats, whether they were forests, swamps, or coastal prairies. They've dealt with cold Pennsylvanian winters and hot Texas summers, so they're quite adaptable as well. Besides where they live, what are some other differences between the wolves? Hungry Wolf Let's learn more about these wolves, since we haven't quite made a decision which wolves we'll be taking down to the Amazonian rainforest. Of all the canids in the world, these are the two biggest, our two wolves. The grey wolf is the largest living canid, and the red wolf comes in at number two on the size chart. Grey wolves are usually about six to six and a half feet long when fully grown. They're usually around 140 to 150 pounds, but can easily get up past 180 pounds, especially the farther north they live. The colder it is, the more weight they have to pack on, and as long as there is an abundant food source, they can keep themselves fed and happy. Red wolves will usually grow to be five to five and a half feet long and can weigh between 70 to 90 pounds two big puppies, but a distinct difference between the two. We can tell the grey wolf truly holds the title of biggest canid. Now, they both share many similarities, like the fact that they're both pack hunters. This is a common trait for all canids, and especially wolves. A pack of wolves could be just six wolves, it could even be more than ten, and they don't just live together, they hunt together. Wolves are highly intelligent, able to communicate with others in a variety of ways, especially with certain body movements. They're in tune with one another in their pack, so when they're out hunting large prey, they're on the same page. One important thing to note about wolves is that they are also endurance hunters. Unlike the felines of the world who are ambush predators, wolves do not rely on pouncing on its prey and capturing them immediately. If it happens that way, fantastic, but wolves are counting on a long chase. They are endurance freaks, like marathon runners who can just keep going and going. Their bodies are built for keeping up speeds for long distances. They give chase to their prey, knowing that their prey will not only race off, but will be able to do so at a fast pace. But they are counting on their prey eventually tiring themselves out, and the wolves may then do the dirty work, attacking when their victim lacks energy and strength. 
No matter if the prey still has strength, the wolves have more. They are extremely muscular and strong individuals, and they have a bite force of 1200 psi, enough to crack through thigh bones of large deer and moose. These wolves aren't messing around, and they can hit top speeds between 30 and 37 miles per hour. That's a factor that comes in handy when chasing after speedy deer and other fast prey that they set their sights on. Now, even though wolves are predators, highly successful predators, in many of the regions they live, they are not definitely the apex predator. They may be in certain regions, but they often have to compete with bears that are larger than them, or cougars or coyotes. So they aren't most certainly at the top of the food chain in every instance. They may have to duke it out with other predators who may be looking for the same prey as them, or may be looking to make their home in the same region. Because of this, wolves are highly flexible and adaptable. They're not set in their ways. They're not used to be king of the tiger, because they're always aware a bigger predator may be lurking about. If we ship them off to the Amazon, how much of that will change, and how much will stay the same? The Amazon First, we must inspect the Amazonian rainforest as it is, before we can determine what changes may happen. It's located in South America, spanning across several countries, including Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, and others. It's the world's largest rainforest, and it is a massive source of unique plant life and animal life. There are over 3,000 species of fish, over 1,300 species of birds, and more than 400 different species of mammals. Inclusive of these mammals are animals like various types of deer, tapirs, capybaras, spectacled bears, and jaguars. The jaguar is one of the scarier animals you could come across in the Amazon. They range from 5 to 8 feet long and can weigh up to 300 pounds. They're the third largest cat in the world after the tiger and the lion. So bigger than any cougars you'd come across. These ambush predators are fast, able to hit blistering speeds of 50 miles per hour, and they have one of the strongest bites in the animal kingdom, a force of 1500 psi, able to break right through a tortoise's shell. Now the bears in this region, spectacled bears, they're much smaller than many other bears. The only bears in South America, growing up to 5 feet long and weighing between 150 and 300 pounds. And then there are the black caimans. They can be 7 to 14 feet long, weighing 800 to 1,000 pounds. Powerful reptiles dwelling both on land and in water, obviously much faster and more agile in the water. And though the numbers aren't positive on a black caiman bite force, it is believed they can snap their jaws with a couple thousand pounds of pressure per square inch. Whatever the number is, you don't want to find out. Now, the Amazon is a hot and humid place for all these varieties of animals that live there. The dry season sees an average temperature of 82 degrees Fahrenheit, along with a relative humidity of 77%. For their rainy season, the temperature is still warm, but average temperatures around 78 degrees Fahrenheit and a relative humidity of about 88%. Far different from the climate in Canada or Russia. The Amazon has a delicate ecosystem that's existed without much interruption for a long time. So let's interrupt it now. The Delivery We're making a delivery, not with Amazon, but to the Amazon. Please handle with care. As you open this box, race away from it. Because emerging from this gigantic crate is a couple of packs of wolves. We decided to bring a pack of grey wolves and a pack of red wolves. Grey wolves are larger, more dominating. Red wolves are also large, a bit smaller than their grey cousins, but they're more attuned to warmer climates. The temperature change will be less of a surprise to the reds, but many of our greys will be astounded by the warm temperatures. But remember, it's in the blood of wolves in general, red or grey, to be adaptable. Our reds used to be found from Texas to Pennsylvania, they can deal with a variety of temperatures and climates. And our greys, though primarily in places like Canada and Russia, they can be spotted in India and China too. So it's going to be a surprise at first, but we wouldn't call it a shock. This is something all of our wolves can adjust to over time. The reds may adjust more quickly, and they'll probably form hunting packs and strategize soon after their arrival. The greys will do so a little later. Wolves are perfectly fine living in the woods, so the rainforest won't be too different for them. They'll be fine with the tree cover, 
They can find their open areas more preferred for hunting, but being able to hide behind trees will be great. Wolves are agile in their movements, so they'll be able to navigate this terrain just fine. They will enjoy the nice big river running right through their new home, but we hope someone tells them to be careful. If not, our wolves will have to find out the hard way. We hope they don't find out by example seeing the big black caiman pop out at an inopportune time. But that won't be something you need to tell our wolves twice. They'll know to steer clear of the river except when drinking, and they'll learn to drink with caution. There will be plenty of animals to feast on, deer, tapirs, capybaras, there will be no shortage of food, and wolves will be able to implement their same strategies when hunting. So everything has been looking pretty good so far. In fact, when they come across their first bear, they'll be relieved. They're used to sharing territories with much larger brown bears and black bears. These spectacled bears are mostly smaller than our greys, and not much bigger than our reds, one less larger predator. However, the wolves won't see any cougars, but they'll soon meet the likes of the larger, stronger jaguar. The jaguar's bite is worse than any bark or bite the wolves are used to, and the wolves will realize they aren't the apex predators in this region. But that's fine, they're often not the definitive apex predator. They are used to being a top predator, but not the undisputed champ in most places. This isn't so bad. And hey, that jaguar is scary, and they'll certainly steer clear. He can hit faster speeds than them, but they can keep up fast speeds for longer. So as long as they don't get too close, even if the jaguar gives chase, they'll likely be able to outrun him. The Amazonian rainforest will be an adjustment, but one our wolves will be able to make. They'll trade larger bears and cougars for smaller bears and jaguars. This scenario may even give them less competition. They'll be more careful around the water, a new enemy in the Black Cayman will be one to watch out for, and there will be no shortage of food. The existing predators won't really be affected by the presence of the wolves, maybe occasionally losing a meal to their new competition, but nothing too critical. The only losers in this equation, the prey. One more predator to worry about. Two packs of wolves, one full of greys, one full of reds, all full of scary chomping mouths. Life just got harder for the vegetarians of the Amazon.